So we all know about the law of attraction, manifestation, creating our own reality, but what does Jesus have to say about that? What is the truth about manifestation? Because a lot of Christians, a lot of people that proclaim to know Jesus, practice the law of attraction and manifestation without actually knowing what it is. Part of the allure, part of the attraction of the law of attraction is because our spirit was designed to recognize truth. We were made to find God, to fellowship with God. And so the whole essence of the law of attraction is based on truth. So I'm gonna explain the truth and the lies and why this practice is actually really dangerous for you. The law of attraction states that whatever thoughts, whatever frequencies you let out into the universe, whatever vib vibrational frequency you operate under, that is what you're going to attract and that our thoughts and that our actions, everything about us as energetic beings manifests our reality and this is true the law of attraction is a naturally occurring thing you can test it in your everyday life right you think of something and all of a sudden you start seeing more of that thing you think of a car and then all of a sudden you see three of the same car back to back and so those are just examples of it and these are mysteries that God has established within the earth if you look into quantum physics or just physics in general you see that a lot of the laws that scientists have applied to energy it exists within the spiritual realm so the fact that energy cannot be created nor destroyed means that energy is an eternal force that transcends everything right so whatever whatever kind any kind of energy that we carry we expel it out into the universe and that is why we attract certain people and we attract certain relationships based off of what we put out, right? So these are all examples of the law of attraction at work. So the danger in this is the way that it is pushed out by the new age and spiritual communities. They have tapped into this law within creation and made it into witchcraft. So witchcraft is the manipulation and control of energy. That is the structure of witchcraft. And so rather than allowing these things to kind of naturally occur on their own, the spiritual community or other spiritualists, they advocate for manipulating this. So why is this wrong? Why is it wrong to attract certain things to yourself? So the law of attraction isn't evil within itself, it's just a law, it's something created and established by God. But when we start to tamper with the law of attraction through manifestation, that is when you get into dangerous territory. So I wanted to clarify that because terminology is important, especially when trying to understand these things and explaining them to Christians as well as new agers. Um, we don't want to demonize things. We don't want to demonize terms We want to understand what they mean and also where the danger comes in because Satan does not create anything. He is not the creator. All he does is pervert things pervert things that are already within existence and You know that one lie that he implements into something ruins the whole thing. So that is what manifestation is. Manifestation is the tampering of the law of attraction. Manifesting is witchcraft. So there are several ways that you manifest. And if you've never done this before, I'm gonna just talk about some of the ways that you do it. I just think it's important to talk about some of the ways you can manifest things because you may be doing it unknowingly. You know what I mean? So a lot of people manifest by scripting. So by writing down um, things repeatedly, writing down certain things that they would like to happen, 
Um, there's vision boards, there is uh, words of affirmation, like spell work and things like that. There are literally a thousand ways to manifest. So a lot of Christians believe that manifestation or even new agers believe that manifestation is the same thing as prayer. So when you talk to them about it, they're like, well, you do the same thing when you pray to God, I'm just doing it this way. And although it is essentially kind of the same thing, the source is what matters. The source in which you partake in any spiritual activity determines whether it's good or evil. So when we pray, we go directly to God. We ask God the Father for his will to be done. And depending on what it is, things come to pass. It is, it's never our will. So that is a difference between prayer and manifestation. When you pray, it's God's will. And when you manifest, it's your will. A lot of people have prayed for things and then it never comes to pass, they never get it, and so they start to manifest. And guess what happens when they manifest it? They get it. And so then people think, God must not love me, he must not be real, I'm gonna start trusting the universe, the universe has my back, you've heard all that stuff. But here's the thing, when you manifest, you are expelling out that energy, those desires, speaking things out into existence and then you're allowing everything within creation everything within the second heaven to give you those things they start to put in that work those chain reactions start to happen to get you that thing and why does satan do that because he wants to tamper with people's faiths he wants to take people's faiths into themselves, into the universe, into alternative paths of spirituality instead of God, because that is what witchcraft is. Witchcraft is control. Witchcraft is not surrender. When we pray, it's just God. God, I want this, but if you do not think it's for me, if you don't want me to have that job, that car, that relationship, that money next week, let it be your will and not my own. Sometimes God's will isn't your will. Some, when you're in his will, when your will matches his will, that's the perfect spot. That's the sweet spot. That's where we want to be, right? Because when your desires start to match God's, things start happening. When you pray according to what he wants for you, all those prayers start getting answered hallelujah and so that is where we want to be but when we're walking in the flesh and we're not walking by the spirit and we don't know god when we don't pray when we don't read scripture our flesh starts to grow and so our own desires start to overpower those desires of god's so overpower the desires of god so that is why christians cannot manifest I mean, you can if you want, but you're going to start making covenants with all of the spirits, all of the fallen angels, all of the principalities that all of a sudden pick up your wish and make it happen. You're coming into agreement with those things and then it starts to seep into your life, your health, your relationships, and that is how the demonic operates. They operate through the occult, hidden. They never want you to know that that thing you manifested attracted negativity, bad health, toxic relationships, but that's how it is. God has your highest good. He has your best interest in mind. And that is because he is all knowing. He is all seeing. He sees the trajectory of your life from beginning to end and not through the limited focal point that you have. A lot of times that limited perspective makes us believe that what we want, our desires are the most beneficial for us. But when God says no, when he's like, I'm not going to give that to you, it is always for a greater purpose. It's for a reason. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And surrendering to that and aligning ourselves with his will will give us that freedom to not have to control our lives through manifestation, through work. Because 
let's be honest, if you've ever manifested, you know how much work that is. The constant worrying about not having those negative thoughts because you don't want to ma negatively manifest that reality or like you don't want to influence whatever frequency is all around you and like it's hard work and yes in christ we are called to take our cat our thoughts captive into obedience to jesus christ because as christians we get those bad thoughts too but the difference is grace in the new age you don't have jesus you don't have the grace of the holy spirit residing within you that empowers you to eliminate those thoughts to truly have them be captive to the obedience of jesus jesus the name of jesus he is the name given above every other name every thought every spirit every emotion is held captive through the name of jesus and that is the hope that we have in him manifestation is sold to people as freedom but what it really is is slavery it enslaves you onto your own desires onto your own ego onto your own mind because it's it creates this toxic environment within yourself because you're constantly filled with fear and paranoia that you're not manifesting well enough or at the end of the day you think back on all of the negative thoughts you had that day or all of the words that you spoke out into the universe that didn't align with what you were trying to manifest and all of a sudden you become the problem because you are responsible for creating your reality so the thing about the new age is that it sells you out on this idea that you can be the problem and the solution at once and that is it's complete insanity and i'm not calling anyone insane but this the new age and their practices it really creates this delusion and it feeds off of the spirit of insanity and if you are practicing this i just i want you to take a moment and be completely honest with yourself and ask yourself are you free is that new car is that relationship worth all of the stress and anxiety and work that is put in your manifestation. I'm not saying that good things are not worth fighting for and working for, but what I am saying is that there is a way to do things in the realm of the spirit. When you partner with the Holy Spirit, that work bears fruit. That work that you put into your career, your relationship, it's going to bear the fruit, the good fruit that you wanted to bear. And it comes through a process that is filled with grace and peace. Peace. That is what the new age lacks because it does not have the Holy Spirit. Jesus condemns all of these practices not because not because he doesn't want you to be your highest self or wants to keep you in a spiritual blindfold but because he wants to open up your eyes into the truth that he created in the way that is the most effective. The power of the tongue is a, another law, another example of a spiritual rule, law that the New Agers know about. Uh, spell work is one of the manifestations of this law, um, law of manifestation <laughs> through the law of attraction. They know that whatever you speak out has power to come to pass, to speak life, bring death. And so all these things, like these are things that have been given to us, the children of God. As his creation, we have been gifted the creation, the earth, and all of the things that God implemented through it. We we are told that, you know, as we think it, so we become life and death are in the tongue, that whatever we ask in his name shall be given to us. And all of those th things come to pass, bear fruit when we partner with the Holy Spirit, when we're in perfect in the perfect will of god 
people think that all of these things are for like the new agers and the pagan communities, but these things are for us. When we partner with God, we can speak things out. The blessings that are for us, the promises that God has given to us. Uh, scripture says that when we ask something, thank him as, as if we have received it. This sounds a lot like manifestation. And all of these scriptures that I, I mentioned previously, people will argue against like, well, this sounds like manifestation. Why can't we manifest with God? And that's the thing. Like we, we can't, there is a way, there are spiritual principles that we have to abide by to remain under God's jurisdiction, to remain under his protection. It says in Psalm 91 that whoever abides under his wings will be protected by the omnipotent. So when we abide by him, when we abide under his covering, under his statutes, under obedience, that is when we have protection in the realm of the spirit. We can speak things out if God says so. We can write things down if God says so. We can practice in these things obviously we're not going to be doing sex magic and manifesting through like spell work and things like that but you gotta catch what i'm saying like we can use a lot of these principles if we know that god has given us that word and that promise but god also says come out from out of them do not follow me in the ways of the world so we're not going to call that manifestation we're not going to say that we're manifesting our reality because we're not doing anything we're just affirming what god said already his word does not come back come back void right and so another reason why we shouldn't even use this terminology is because we don't want to be a stumbling block to other people. We can say that we're manifesting the promises of God um, without saying that we're practicing manifestation or we're manifesting ourselves because if someone else hears it, they're going to take that into worldly, pagan, new age manifestation because they don't understand that you actually just mean prayer. That is why it's so important to know these terminologies, to know what these things mean, not only so that you are crystal clear about what is right and wrong, but also so that other people are not confused and that so that you're not leading other people into the rabbit hole that are new age practices. So no, you cannot manifest your reality not if you're in God at least because it's not up to us it's about what God wants when we surrender we give him the the access into our lives to tell us what we need what we don't need and we pray and we develop this relationship of trust and our hearts begins to change into his heart and his desires come through out of our hearts and we start to walk in our highest good and this is the counterfeit of the higher self that the new age wants to sell you but in reality all of the things that you manifest outside of god's will it's only opening the doors to demonic covenants because who do you think is making those things come to pass like you like it's this power trip that satan likes to put people in because he starts giving people whatever they want and they start to believe like that they're powerful that they're the almighty manifester like <laughs> and they become their own gods and they start trusting themselves and whenever things go left whenever things go south they are left empty and confused and I have experienced a lot of this myself, a lot of this letdown that comes in with not surrendering and believing that my life is my own. And something that really started to click is watching manifestation testimonies. And I just encourage you to go down the YouTube rabbit hole and start looking up um, manifestation testimonies and my manifestation went wrong kind of videos because when you ask for something satan is not gonna give you because a lot of times when you manifest something when you ask the universe something it's gonna give you something 
in return but it's not gonna be the way that you want it's not gonna be in the fullest form in the highest good like when you ask for a boyfriend or something like you like like for example you manifest a guy like a, a relationship and then they come and all of a sudden they are not who you wanted or like you get a car and it's just those testimonies really showcased Satan's true nature. Like it always comes with a catch because witchcraft gives you something, but it takes something in return. It's a transactional practice. And, and we see it in scripture where it says that what good is it to gain the world and lose your soul? It's, it's, that's how it is with Satan. It's not a whole, it's always one here one there transactional type of thing you can never have a fullness that is only promised through jesus christ i hope that this video clarified a lot of these things for you there is no condemnation in christ so if you are practicing these things and you said that you're a christian that you follow god don't feel condemned just repent and know that there is always forgiveness if we truly are coming from a place of turning back from those things, right? If we tell God, like, I am sorry for continuing to manifest, continuing to do things outside of your will. If you don't trust God, be honest with him. Tell him that you are not all the way there yet with surrender and ask him to help you, ask him to increase your faith and ask him to show you how to do so because you do not want to fall into the traps of the enemy and open doors into your life that were never meant to be <laughs> opened. So I hope that this video helped you and if you have any questions as always, please let me know in the comments. And if there's anything I can expound on, please let me know. God bless you guys. I am praying for each one of you that is here and I will see you.